What are you going to ask me? No one tells me anything. No, it's better that way. Don't you think? <laughs> I never know what you're going to say. Why should you know what I'm going to say? All right. That's fair. fair, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, you can tell by the crunching of the kettle corn. <laughs> it's a Joy Bay hard day. It's Thursday. I'm messing with your days again. Every day. I know. It's supposed to be Wednesday. I know. You know, it, it, Wednesday, I think, was the sweet spot. I thought maybe you'd be in a better mood Thursday. But as you reminded me earlier today. I told you. Yes. With the more nasty mood I'm in, the funnier I can be. This is true. This is true. It's the double-edged sword. I don't intend to be funny. I just can't help myself You sometimes. intend to be nasty? No. <laughs> more than funny. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> either way, people seem to enjoy it and uh, enjoy the crankier you are. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me personally, not so much. I think cranky is more the word, not nasty. Yeah, I don't think you're nasty. I'm I not think, nasty. No. Or I'm not mean. No. But I'm cranky. You're cranky as time goes on. Speaking of things that generally make you cranky, it's Halloween. And um, yeah, I know. Not your favorite. Not my favorite either. Um, you know, it's really All Souls Day. You know, I'm a Catholic yes. girl. Yes. And that's what it's all about, dead people. Right. And well, yet they turned it into some fun kid ho- holiday with candy. I don't mind the candy. And I like my kids getting dressed up. And I like it when I was trick-or-treating as a kid. I have a bad luck. Bad bad luck in October every year. October sure. is over. Well, na- after today, which yeah, is good. So, so, you know, I don't know. Bad things happen on Halloween. Not good. I don't I, like it. I don't. I hate Halloween. Yeah. When I was a kid, I grew up in a tenement area. Yes. You know, and the boys would come around with socks filled with chalk oh, and sure. hit us, and they would hit us, and that hurt. I didn't care for that. Where'd they get all the chalk? What do you mean? Where'd they get all the chalk? I've heard of pennies and socks. No, I've never heard because of... if you have chalk in there, that's it's broken up. Okay. It makes a it makes a a, a a spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. They throw me in the summer. I was thrown under the fire hydrants. Okay. And Halloween, I was hit with socks. All right, filled so you don't with like chalk. this either? No, no. All right. No. And then as an adult, we forced you to and dress up. And then at every Easter, year. they would make fun of me because my mother would shop at little shops in Macy's, and mm-hmm. I'd have a hat on and some really nice little duds, and they would make fun of me then too. This is like the Bermuda shorts. The this Bermuda is... shorts would yeah. be taken out in the summer. Yeah, and yeah. They, I, I just had a, I hated the whole neighborhood. I, I, if I could do it all, and now the funny thing about it is, I grew up in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Yeah, and now it's the trendiest, it's the most expensive neighborhood, and it's artsy. I would have been so much better off if I was yeah. growing up there now. No, absolutely. But I wouldn't have had an act. Oh, okay. So, listen, a little trauma <laughs> gets you through in the end. The way I grew up has turned me into a comedian, a stand-up comic. That's what I did for years. Talk I love about it. my upbringing. Right, so you wouldn't change a thing in retrospect. No. There you and go. And I was a very much loved child. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, we went through, uh, well, speaking of muscle, you know, the only child thing, I wanted to talk to you yeah. about this, because I have two children, mm-hmm. and um, I think for the most part, that's good. I Are think they both yours? They're both mine. Are you sure? No, but I'm, I'm going okay. on. I'm, I'm going with trust at All this right. point. Yeah, they're both redheads, which does give me some pause. Why you don't have red hair? I know that gives me pause. Exactly. Yeah, no, your I'm, wife does. Yeah, I and know. red hair is a recessive trait. I believe. I know. I had a grandfather that had red hair, but still a great grandfather. Grasping for straws. I but am. Go ahead. I am. But regardless, let's not get into the paternity of my children. All right. The point was the whole sibling or single child thing. So last night, I had two tickets to the World Series. Yeah. And really? I took my oldest daughter and not my youngest daughter. Yeah. My youngest. How much is the difference? Um, three years. Mm-hmm. So I took the 13-year-old to the World okay. Series. Yeah. I thought it was going to be okay, but it was not okay. She got mad? She got very mad. I arrived at the... I, first of all, my wife told her, which I was hoping wasn't going to happen. But then I got to the... Um, I got to read you this message I got from my daughter. This is heartbreaking. Here we go. How could you? All in caps. I'm at the Yankee game at this point. Actually, I know how. You decided to take your favorite child to oh the Yankee game God. and the leave your other this. daughter that Are makes you- Are you sure your wife didn't write this? Yeah, your other daughter that makes you coffee every morning, which she does, mm. um, I might add at home. Well, guess what? I don't even care anymore. Have fun with Grace. I'll have fun without you, and then you'll know how it feels. Wow. She's I mean, very mature. Very mature yeah. and very uh, manipulative emotionally. So, I don't think that was manipulative. She told you right out she hates you right now. Yeah, I don't like it. Well, then you should have thought twice. You should have gotten another ticket or go with your wife and leave them with a babysitter. Yeah, I guess so. But it was yeah. nice to take the older one. Well, you know, I, I don't know anything about this because I'm an only child. Sure. And I only have an only child and I only have one grandchild also. Yes. And so they, that just does not come up. But a lot of people I know, they'll go on vacation with one kid, take the kid to yeah. Europe and then say, I'll do this for you the next time. Tell her that. Well, I did. I, I told her whatever she wants to do. 
I'll take her to a Broadway without, show without, without her sister. Without yep. Grace, yeah. And and we'll do something. So yeah. that seems to have That's what you should it. do. Make so, it up because, you know, this is one of those traumas that will follow her the for rest, rest of her life. For the rest of my life, I'll be hearing about it. She'll be 40 years old on the couch saying, and then that day, he took my big sister. Yes. And though, I, if I paid her $100, I couldn't get her to watch a Yankee game with me at home. Like, you know, it's just the idea of going to the World Series. And with the upset. sister. You would with think the they're sister. not rivals no, already, the two is. of them? That's what it is. And so here's the thing. This one, the young one, yeah. she mentioned it there. She does make me coffee every morning before I go to work. I come downstairs. get. Why does she do that? It's like a chore, but she likes doing it. Like she, oh, I guess she has a little allowance for it. She wants daddy to you know, yeah. appreciate her. Yes. And then you turned on her I turned viciously. turned on her viciously. I have to fix this. <laughs> but it was very exciting. I mean, like. Literally. No wonder you don't get along that easily with all these women. I mean, you how don't many really women know what do I have doing? to make happy? But My you, God. You don't really know what you're doing when there's more than one woman in the room. I have six of you. I have two daughters. I have a wife. None of you are happy. I don't really know what to do. I mean, this is really... I, I, anyway, anyway, I feel very lucky to be surrounded by such impressive, smart, wonderful women. Yeah. Let's talk about the show today. Um, so it was Halloween. After all the backlash and everything else, hopefully people enjoyed the show because... We had a fun Halloween open. We had the kids' costumes. Yeah. You guys were unfortunately not in costume, but no. we got to talk about Hot Topics. We don't need the costumes every year. Yeah, I know. I, I know. went to Bette Midler's Halloween party one time I mm -hmm. had because I had a costume. And she, she just went around the room and she sing, singles me out and says, Oh, Joy, how much are you giving and, and I had to send her a thousand dollar check. The charity thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did, she did. That's that was rude. Yeah. Well, talk about your traumatic Halloweens. But you did send the thousand dollar check because you're a generous person. I did. That's what you do. Um, all right. Now we did talk about the election on the show today because we are just a couple days away. Right. Um, I've been asking everybody this week about yeah. the election and how they're feeling. The election. Their, yes. What their gut reaction is. Are they optimistic? Pessimistic? Do they feel confident? I I switch every day. How are you feeling right well, now? I I really don't know how to even. Answer that question. I mean, the polls are not making any sense anymore. Right. I mean, are you are you confident that you're going to wake up on Wednesday morning and uh, Kamala is the president? I think Kamala will win. Mm -hmm. I think that he will drag it out. Yes, definitely. I think he's going to protest and contest and mm -hmm. just be a, a generally a pain in the ass about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of his uh, followers are going to be uh, doing some version of the insurrection on January 6th. And I think that we'll finally get it straight, and then um, the National Guard might have to be called out. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, so I, I put you as cautiously optimistic. <laughs> but I also read that the the the, the Congress will yeah. go to the Republicans. So what good is having you know such a split? You need at least the Senate to be on your side when you're a uh, I think president. Regardless, I think Donald Trump not being president is impactful and and. Uh, and then please go away, Donald. Where mm -hmm. just go away? I don't want you to go to prison. I really don't. I, I, have, I don't have hatred for him. I just want him to go away. Go move to Moscow, whatever you have to do. Oh, so this is interesting. Would you pardon him for all of his yes, crimes to have him I just would. go away from the I would the pardon him eye. just to get rid of him. Interesting. Just the way Gerald Ford pardoned Nixon and we never saw him again. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Nixon became a better statesman after he was thrown out sure. than before, while he was in office. He opened the door to China. Maybe Trump could do something, but not from, not from New York North City. <laughs> what? Ambassador to North Korea, maybe? Go to North yeah. Korea. They'll love you there. Yeah. And go to Russia, places where you really are welcome. Why do you stay here? Nobody likes you here. Well, I think a lot of people do. Well, not in New York. Yeah. All right. Well, on election night, what's your plan going to be? Do you have a plan for election I'm night? I'm going to watch the- Alone, with friends? With you're going to get together? With my husband and my dog. You're going to text everybody all night long? Possibly. And, yes. But I mean, I can't go to a party. They have these parties because I have to get up and come to work the next day. Right. I know. You know, if we could have the day off the next day, I would have a no, big it's party. It's going to be a big day, I think, the day after the election. <laughs> People might be tuning in for us. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have well, Anna, what are you going to do? I'm going to have Anna on that day, too. We're going to have all six of you here to, to react what to the election. What are you going to do that night? Um, I'm probably, my wife gets really nervous watching things like election results, so she will probably be in a different room, and I'll have to watch by myself and then give her updates throughout Why the night. Why don't you watch with your younger daughter? You know. And put Grace in the bathroom. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Punish my old, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to me, what's the kid's name? The little Lily. One? Put Lily in the fr fr say say only Lily. Yes, and can I'm watch, the, watch election the returns. Movie. Yes, Grace has to go in the other room with mommy. So we're not doing it this year, but there's a lot of uh, <laughs> fond recollections of our election night special from 2016. Yeah, I like that. Why yeah. don't we do that again? Uh, it, it didn't work out. We looked into it a couple times, but the, did the... we get a rating that time? Yeah, we did pretty well. We yeah. did pretty well. A lot of tears. I remember the people were crying. Yeah. Someone brought me a black veil. I wore like as if I was at a funeral. Yes. Uh -huh. and, well, uh, we were we were really uh, you know ready for Hillary. Yeah, we were ready for a woman president, and sure. then and then uh, he just came in from behind like some weird, some weird typhoon. 
we were uh, we were on for like three hours that night. I was looking at I was actually watching it back. It's yeah. it's fascinating to watch back. The show was so different. What even were we in talking about for three hours? We had a lot of guests. We had like oh. uh, we had a Trump impersonator come out. Yeah. We had uh, Mario Cantone singing songs about election products. <laughs> I mean, it was a it was a wild like a fun three show. hours. It wasn't bad. Yeah. It, it, it took a turn, much like the World Series last night halfway yeah. through. Well, what happened last night? No, the Yankees lost. They their, lost. They lost. Oh, They're out well. of the World Series. Yeah, I'm not happy about it. Um, all right. You were very excited to bring up the Wall Street Journal today. I in was. fact, you, you had a hard copy of it. You were like Regis in the old days. Or, yeah, it was pretty <laughs> yeah, good. I liked yeah, it. Yeah. Um, you had the Wall Street Journal front page in front of you talking about the economy and you asked Mark Cuban about it. He explained why he thinks Kamala Harris would be better for the economy. Yes. What did you think about that and what he had to say? I thought he was right on the money. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, he would know more than anybody else. And all of the, the economists, I believe the newspaper, The Economist, mm -hmm. is backing Kamala. He, the one thing about, I mean, people are worried, that, where's, what's going to happen to their money, you know, if he gets in? If the stock market, the stock markets have been killing. Yeah. People are making money on their money markets and on their IRAs Those that and are everything. invested. A lot of people aren't. Most people thing. are invested if they're working. If they have a 401k or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So people are invested in the stock market. These tariffs are going to cost people more money mm -hmm. on the toys and everything else he pointed out. And, uh, and he wants to get rid of immigrants. I'd like to know who's going to do all this work that has to be done in this country. Americans don't want to do a lot of the jobs. Yeah. And then they complain that immigrants are taking their jobs. When was the last time an immigrant took away a job from somebody? I don't even remember that ever happening. Let, let's talk about something else here that's kind of beside the point. But did you notice that Mark Cuban was talking to us from his private plane? That's pretty. That's a He's view rich. first. He's rich, babe. Yeah. Well, the he, man is rich. We uh, found out late, right before the show started, that uh, he had gotten the time wrong for the interview. He thought oh. it was at ten thirty instead of eleven thirty. I see. And so uh, he had a plane to catch, and then at the last minute, he said, oh, "I'll just do the interview from the plane." Wow, that's really <laughs> groovy. That's I have to cool. say. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, I do too. That's a view first. He's actually on the show today because when you were sitting next to him at Shark Tank. You wanted to talk politics, and you said, get your butt back here. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we got. You know, I, I tend to do that, don't I? You do, yes. Tomorrow we have Chris Christie on again. We have Chris Christie on again, yes. And uh, people seem to enjoy the back and we forth. We did really well last week with him, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, no, we absolutely did. Although there were some comments from the audience about the amount of crosstalk, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Tell the girls. I do. Tell them. All right, Miss Moderator. Mm. Well, Lay the, the hammer down. Well, I, I try. Yeah. I really do. Today I turned on, uh, what's her face? Uh, Alyssa. <laughs> Because she wouldn't let me finish the damn sentence. Yes. I mean, we have trouble getting in. I and, know. I know. You know. It's a 28-year problem, I oh, think. Oh, my God. For 28 years, I've, yeah. been, I've been trying to get my two cents in. And, you know, I don't have a tendency to give speeches. No, you don't. So all I want to do is get my line in and mm -hmm. make my point and get out. Yes. You're a jabber. How about giving me space? I'll do what I can. <laughs> All right, now we've been talking, you're the comedian. Yeah. We've been talking about this. I'm this... not that funny today. Uh, no, but you are professionally a comedian, and you've been funny today. <laughs> um, the crankier you are. The uh, We've been talking all this week about that joke at the at the MSG thing, uh, the Puerto oh. Rican garbage He's joke. He's not funny, the guy. No, well, that's what I was going to ask. That's his biggest sin. He's not funny. Come on. There you go. I mean, people get into trouble. Don Rickles, Rickles was funny, yeah. and but he was not funny. That was just stupid. But Rickles took no prisoners. He would stick, put his face in Frank Sinatra and say, uh, uh, two shots in the head from Benny Bumbats or whatever. And did, Sinatra would die laughing. Did you get to work with Rickles at all? Yes, yeah, I opened for Rickles at Westbury. Oh, that's he amazing. He liked to have a little couple of drinks beforehand. He did. I think we've talked about this before, but I used to produce him at Letterman. And towards the end, uh, his, his uh, body man would tell me that... It was mostly water at the end, but John still thought it was vodka <laughs> before he Seriously? went on. Seriously? Yeah. Well, because uh, uh, he would sit with Steve backstage mm -hmm. while I was warming them up. Yeah. And Steve said, how could you go out there after you have some gin? And he said, I can't go out without the gin. Oh, he was- he Alan was... King, too. Another one who used to hit the bottle before he went out. And that would give them the um, the yeah. testosterone the to testosterone. get out there yeah. <clears throat> and, and face that audience. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. No, working with Rickles, the few times I did was just- my favorite thing in the world. It's hilarious. Just uh, one of a kind. Nobody yeah. like him. And by the way, he would never, he would never survive in this environment. Now. Well, I'm curious about that. I, I wonder if it so. would hold up. I think he'd probably just be tired of it and walk away. But... No, he would start. They'd start canceling him and getting mad at him. You know, the comedy removal service is alive and well out there. Yeah. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. I remember uh, I was I had worked with him a couple times and I saw him and uh, I just found out that Heather was going to have our second kid, uh -huh. and he said, you know, so how you doing? And I said, oh, good, we're, having, we're gonna have a baby. And he patted me on the stomach and he said, when do you do? <laughs> so, he was, was funny. Nice. Oh, he Come was the on. best, he was the best. Um, all right, so we have a listener call for you. Okay. Let's listen. Hi, Brian, my question's for Joy. 
I noticed that she's always got a little dish next to her um, mug on the table, and I just wondered what she keeps in there. Thanks very much, and love the show. Where? He, the little dish that's next to you uh, by the mug. In front oh, of you. those are Tic Tacs. Yes. You know, I have coffee in the morning, and mouth could be feel weird yes. when you're talking to people close up, so I have my Tic Tacs. That's, just, that's very uh, thoughtful of you, I, I think. I think so. Yeah, that's good. All right, good question. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also have a listener text. That was a British accent. I think so. They must watch us on Hulu. Yeah, or YouTube or any many of the places you can find us. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, we also have a listener text for you uh, from Darcy in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, Swing State. Hi, Brian. I'm a huge fan of the show and the podcast. Thank you, Darcy. Uh, my question <laughs> is for Joy. Joy, what made you decide to marry Steve after being together for so long? Do you recommend just being in a long-term committed relationship or actually getting married? Well, we were together. We met in 82, and we didn't get married till 2011. Wow. Because, you know, what was the point? You know, sure. in the old days, you had you had to wait to have sex to be married. Those were really, they say those are the good old days. Why? What was what were we waiting for, exactly? 82 and 2011. Yeah. My wife was born in 80, and we got married in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> so that's less time. Yeah, that's a whole other type of way to look at things. Yes. But, you know, I didn't feel like moving in with any of having had anybody in my house. Right. That's I wanted uh, to, always says, yeah. I used to say I want a man in my life, but not in my house. Sure. But um, but then after a while, why did we get married? I often tell this story. There was a woman in the family, an in-law, who was gay, mm-hmm. and her girlfriend was in the hospital, and she was not allowed to visit to make decisions for her her partner's health because they were not married. And I thought I don't want that to happen. So that's why. All right. So then when it became okay, yeah. That was the reason. And we had a, a very small group of people at the 21 Club. What became, she came for two minutes and left. Which is, I think, a, the record for her staying that's at anyway. I know. Yeah. The fact that she even came was a big deal. Yeah. And Susie Essman was the uh, MC of the night. Mario mm-hmm. Cantone performed. Mm-hmm. Alan it sounds Alda, like our election special. Alan Alda did the horror with uh, Steve. Yeah. It was a wonderful wedding. I, I would like to do it again. Yeah. All right. Well, you can renew your <laughs> vows. You know, every time they, people renew their vows, they get divorced. I think you're good at this point, I would think. You I never mean, know. You never know. You All never right. know. Yeah. It sounds like our election special, except <laughs> Whoopi wouldn't show up for that. <laughs> That's no. the difference. Yeah. She did two minutes at your wedding, but didn't come for the election special. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let's see. Before we go, you made big headlines on the podcast, as you often do. I did? Yes. This time it was oh. about how Bernie was controlling your marriage. People were very uh, invested in this. They were commenting yeah. on it. They did were they worried. have a solution? Some of them think this is a sign of dementia for Bernie. I saw that. Doggy dementia, <laughs> yeah. somebody told me. Well, he's only seven. No, he's fine. He's fine. Seven, seven in, in people years is 49. Yeah, he has an old man vibe to him. Bernie. Yeah, but he's getting yeah. too fat, though. Really? Because I feed him from the table now. Because don't do that. He wants the bread so bad. And I feel sorry for him. He's the same thing over and over again. Imagine if you had the same meal every single day. Yeah. So I give him like an an hour. (laughs) He wants it. Oh, of course he does. (laughs) All right. Well, so viewers, first of all, has it gotten better? Um... Maybe. I don't know if he's hearing something. I mean, this morning he was uh, 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 mm-hmm. uh, crying like that. So yeah. I have to de- I have to decipher what if it's uh, barking like that. That means he either wants to eat or he has to go out. Okay. But when he whimpers, eh, like a little negative, like this morning. So I finally got out of bed, 530, and I saw that he was thirsty. Yeah. Okay. okay, so jump off the bed. But now he's too fat to jump off the bed. Oh, so maybe that's really what it is. You just got to get him in shape. I'm going to put him on Ozempic. No more people feel. No, I'm only food. kidding. But because what I notice is that be- since he's gotten fat, mm-hmm. he snores more. Yeah, and and he sleeps more. It's not healthy. I'm going to put him on a diet. All right. Well, so viewers have some suggestions here. Uh, walk him late at night. Maybe he needs to be top more tired. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, we also had uh, that your bedroom is haunted. <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah. Possible, it's not that old a building, so I don't think anybody was murdered there. Is it possible you snore too much? I do not. Okay. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> um, is it environmental? Is he overheated? Is there? You need a fan on him to keep him cool. The is that room possible? you could hang meat in this room. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I have the air conditioner on in the middle of the winter and a ceiling fan. <laughs> Rocky Balboa is training in the back of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. And then um, also, is it the election stress? Is it possible that That's Bernie it, is, that he's, is he's concerned? He's stressed out. He, yeah. he he doesn't want Trump to win because of the you know the uh, eating, of, eating the of the pets routine. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. All right. Well, that that's all the time we have. I'm glad we got. Did to you the ever see hear the song the guy made? Oh, oh yeah, they're but you eating wanna... the dogs. They're eating the pets. They're eating. No, this goes like they're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Mm-hmm. They're eating the pets. 
of the people who live there. <laughs> then he goes, people of Springfield don't eat my cats. It's just the funniest it's really, song. It's well done. If nothing good has come out of this election, we at least I have that. I saw him sing it yeah. in Munich, Germany. The guy's an international <laughs> star. And imagine wh- what they think of us right now in Europe. Looking at this election, this is the craziest thing they've ever seen in their lives. All right, so when people say Trump made my, my life better, this is the guy. Oh, <laughs> he my God. He wrote a God. song. He did pretty well. Thank you for joining me today, Joy Behar. Check our episode description for the number to call or text us. Tomorrow, I'm back with Anna Navarro. Oh. Next week, and we have Chris Christie on who's the show. Cr- who's crankier? Who's uh, crankier? Last me week, or Anna? Last week, Anna was a new level of cranky. I actually think it's pretty interesting. Although, I'd love to hear from the viewers. Who is crankier on the podcast? Is it Anna Navarro? Or Joy Behar. Maybe we can put one of those polls up. What about up. the rest of them? They're not cranky. What's the difference between me and them? 28 years. Yes, I know. I know. Thank you for joining me today, Joy. Check our episode description for the number to call or text us. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be back with Anna Navarro. See you then, and enjoy your popcorn. You're leaving out the part about Anna who's cranky? No, I, we just wanted a clean version of it. We'll do a version of it. All right. America will vote. On election day, and let us know who is crankier, Anna Navarro or Joy Behar. I think he